You guys, do you have any idea how many ads I get for dog products? You should see my Facebook feed. It's nothing but dogs and dog stuff. I wish I could see a few other things sometimes, but the algorithm knows me too well. Gardening Facebook, I like gardening too. <laughs> you probably get a lot of ads like that too. Do you find it almost impossible to wade through all of them for the must have thing? Well, now there's no need to because you have me. We are starting a new series here at How to Train a Dream Dog. From time to time, we're gonna do reviews on products for you and tell you our favorites. These are all products that we all use with our dogs, so we can really tell you what we think. No gimmicks, no ads, no paid sponsorship, just our honest reviews. Then, if you think your dog will like it, you can go find it at a local pet store or online. Now, today's product review is treat dispensers. Let's get started. Okay, first, what's the hype with these treat dispensers here? What do we, why do we even need them at all? Can we just hand treats to our dog or drop it on the floor in front of them? Well, you sure can, but why not add a little extra element of brain work to their play? Now, after all, dogs need a healthy balance of physical and mental exercise to really fill up their emotional cup. Now, in this video, I showed you how to do both with a fun obstacle course you can build for your dog. Now, these treat dispensers are similar. They get the dog thinking and moving at the same time. Now, these treat dispensers can be filled with treats or kibble or both. Pro tip, you might try using a kibble that is the same brand as your dog's regular food, but with a different protein source. So try turkey instead of chicken or fish instead of beef. Now that kibble will probably work well for the treats and helps your dog get the nutrients she needs and she feels like she's getting a treat. Talk about a win-win scenario. Now, treat dispensers are great for a variety of reasons. I already mentioned that they're good for brain and body work, but they're also great for slowing down eating. They're also great for offering your dog something interesting to do while eating. When given the choice, dogs prefer options that require effort to obtain their food. In the dog training world, we call that contra freeloading. After all, this is how non-domesticated dogs did it, and it's still there in their DNA. So, treat dispensers are great for giving them a job to get their food. Treat dispensers are also different from puzzle feeders because it moves around, so the dog doesn't just stay in one place. Now, that's the best part about body and the brain that I mentioned earlier. These dispensers also promote problem solving because you're gonna see in a minute, each one has a distinct way the dog has to work to get out the goodies. These dispensers can be used with moist treats, which are often higher in value, or dry kibble. So it's really going to work great for whatever your dog would like to work for. You can also do a combination of both. And if the kibble mingles with the treats, well, you know your dog is gonna love it just a little bit more. These dispensers are great for novelty to keep things interesting for your dog. Now, you might wanna use these as part of a rotating system for feeding to keep your dog guessing. These are also great for alternatives to a food bowl. Did you know that there's such a thing as whisker fatigue? It's true. When a dog eats out of a bowl, their whiskers hit the sides of the bowl as they eat. These whiskers are highly sensitive. Repeated contact with the bowl could be bothersome to the dog. Some dogs even prefer to eat from the floor. My dog Pickles has whisker fatigue. I figured it out because he would attempt to drink his water, but then he would back away. And he kept trying to figure out a way to get at the water, but not touch the bowl. I now serve him water in a bigger, wider dish, and he gets his meals in a puzzle feeder or a snuffle mat or one of these toys that I'm talking about today. Okay, let's get to the good part, reviewing some products. This here is the Bobolot. I have recommended this one a lot on my Facebook group, Puppy Training with Michelle Lennon. Now you can see it's a it has a heavy base, it wobbles, and it has a small opening right here where the treats come out. Now you can make the opening smaller or larger depending on the size of the treats. It's kind of like a Weeble Bobble. You remember those toys, right? You can knock it over, but it just pops right back up. The fact that this thing moves on its own is a lot of fun for dogs. Now your pup has to figure out how to tip it just right for that treat to fall out. Then he has to figure out what he did the first time to make it happen and do it over and over again. The movements are a bit erratic, so it takes some problem solving to get that to happen again. This toy gets a thumbs up from me. 
Pickles has always enjoyed it, and a lot of students in my online course like it for their dogs too. But there are a few things that some people don't love about it. So for one, it makes noise. It's a hard plastic. So if you're using it on the tile or the wood or the linoleum, it's gonna rattle. So for some dogs, that's no big deal and they don't even notice. But other dogs do struggle with that sound and it's kind of off-putting. So evaluate your dog's personality and you might find the other dispensers to be a little bit better. I have a great one coming up in just a moment. And the other thing I don't like is it is not super easy to clean at all. There are some tips online that say to take off the cap and run some soapy water through the entire device. The water is gonna flow through the top, but it's gonna come out through the bottom hole where the kibble's dispensed. Now, I think it will work okay, but I do worry a little bit about that part inside getting all the way dry. Now, I use mine with dry kibble only. Then I just wipe it out with a damp rag. That works best for us. Now, the other thing to keep in mind with this and all dispensers your dog might need help or encouragement to get it to work. Now, there is a balance here. Dogs learn by working through things and trying new things to get it to work. So you'll want to give your dog some time and space to try different things to get the treats out. But if he's getting too frustrated, it's time to help him out. Frustration might look like walking away or laying down and staring at it or you, or even letting out a bark or a whine. Now that's your cue to show him how it works. Now you don't wanna force his paw on it, but you can tip the toy so the kibble or the treats come out and then show him that again a few times. Then sit back and let him try. This is a good time to use your yes marker word to let him know that he's on the right track. Oh, and when he gets it, do a little celebration with him. Of course he's happy to get the treat, but he's probably really happy that you're happy too. All right, the next dispenser I wanna talk about is the Kong Wobbler. Now another trainer on my team, Caitlin, has one of these too, and she uses it pretty often with her beagle, Morty. Now he was happy to get another Wobbler session for the sake of this video. The Wobbler has just one size of hole that the kibble can go through. So you're gonna have to test it out and make sure the kibble can fall easily through it. You don't want your pup to get frustrated and then can't get the treat out. This toy is similar to the Bobolot. It has a heavy base, so it naturally returns to that upright position after being knocked over. Dogs are drawn to movement and these toys naturally have it. So that's one reason why they're so popular. Now Morty is really enjoying this toy and he's figured out pretty easily how to get those treats out. And you can see how this is not a stationary toy at all. Morty is all over the place. So that's one benefit to these toys if you want your dog to move his body while working his brain. It's also fun to watch your dog do this and see what other body parts he uses to work at this game. Beagles are all about the nose, but Morty also uses his paws to manipulate it. Good boy, Morty. One benefit to this is that it comes apart easily for cleaning. Now, you can pull the whole thing apart and just scrub out the entire inside. So this is a better fit for moist treats like Zooks or Tricky Trainers. Now I've got a link for you below if you wanna check out a great online store called Chewy.com, you'll find most of these products there. Now, don't mistake this for a regular Kong. This isn't the kind of thing you're gonna fill with or stuff with plain yogurt or baby food. The hole is not big enough for the pup to lick stuff out of. Now, use a normal Kong for that, right here and use the wobbler with individual pieces of kibble or treats. So I'm gonna definitely give this one a thumbs up too, and maybe even a slightly higher score because it's a little less noisy than the Bobolot, and it's easier to clean. Both of these treats make me super happy. Okay, the next one I'm gonna tell you about is a really cool one. It's like a two-in-one. It's called the Snoop, and it's made by Planet Dog. It comes in a lot of different colors, which won't matter to your dog, but I think it's fun. This one is super cool because it's rubber, so it's quiet, and it's a super simple design. It's all one piece of rubber, but you can use it in two ways. You can unfold the little neck to make it a dispenser that's a little harder, or you can fold it in to make it easier for the treat to fall out. Just by design, it also moves easier because it doesn't have the same heavy base as the Wobbler or the Bobola. Dream Dog team member Lincoln is using it with the neck part unfolded. Notice how Lincoln primarily uses his nose, not his paws, to move it around. Now that's just the difference between Lincoln and Morty. It's just fun to note these things. Now here, you can see Lincoln is using it when the neck of the toy is folded in. This is a little easier. And in fact, if your pup has a longer snout like Lincoln, it might be similar to a food bowl. Lincoln likes the easy way out, so that's the way he's using it. 
you can tell that it's nice and it's quiet too. Now the downside to this one is that it's a little harder to clean, but you could get in there with a bottle brush or something else, so that's okay. Lincoln's owner Allison reports that she prefers this one over the Babala. Lincoln's tried both and he likes this one better. Oh, and this one might be a little bit better for dry kibble. A moist treat might have a harder time falling out just because it's more sticky or tacky. So bottom line on the Snoop, thumbs up from me and Lincoln. I have two more treat dispensers I wanna to mention today. But before I do, be sure to subscribe to this channel. This is the first of a series on must have puppy products that I recommend. So let me take the guesswork out of this for you. Oh, and in between must have videos, you're gonna get some great dog training content too. Okay, the next one I wanna go over is the West Paw Tapo. Now we talk a lot about these with our students enrolled in their online course. Now the West Paw Tapo is often a preferred toy for young puppies because it's easier for them to get the yummy stuff out other than the Kong. But did you know that you can actually buy two sizes of this and put them together? Then it becomes a treat dispenser, <laughs> just like the ones I mentioned earlier. So it's good and economical too. When the two parts are put together, it's a very abnormal shape. So I think that would be great for it to roll around erratically. Now in this household, we mostly use the West Paw Topple as a Kong-like filled toy, but I think it's a great option for both uses. Thumbs up from me. Now there's one more dispenser that's caught my eye. So for the sake of this video, we tested it out for you. This is another automatic treat dispenser. So instead of rolling something around to physically get the treat to fall out, this one requires that the dog push a button. Now the button triggers the treat to fall out of a separate dispenser. Now the concept here is that you could put the dispenser across the room from the button. They market it as one way to help your dog get exercise. Well, I'm not so sure about that because exercise has a lot of other elements, especially sniffing but I get what they're saying. Some movement is better than no movement, am I right? I recruited Allison and Lincoln to test this one out for me. Lincoln is not an overly confident fellow and sometimes on windy days, he'll ask to skip his walks. So Allison thought this might be a fun indoor toy for him. Allison reports that this toy has a lot of pluses but some serious minuses. So for one, this is not like a take it out of the box and play with your dog kind of toy. You need batteries. And that's just the beginning. As many of the reviewers say, you have to actually teach your dog to push or step on the button in order to activate the treats to fall out. So getting your dog to do that just takes a little bit of training. Allison reports that Lincoln had no problem sniffing the button, but didn't know how to actually push it hard enough with his nose to make the sound. Also, Lincoln is one of those sound sensitive pups I talked about earlier. So Allison really had to take some time to get him used to that noise coming from the button. Ellison and Lincoln are not only team members, but they're also students too. They've actually worked their way through the fun games in the course. So Allison used a familiar game called Bump It to teach Lincoln what to do with the button. But dogs don't generalize, so when Allison moved the button to the front of the fridge, Lincoln had to figure it out all over again. Now he knew she had good treats and he knew he wanted them, but it took some time to figure out that the button was actually the key to this. Now at first, Allison was the dispenser of the treats and the dispensing machine, it was just close by. This is the way we work up to a skill by breaking it down into baby steps. Now, once Lincoln was reliably ringing the bell with his nose and getting the treat, Ellison activated the automatic part of the dispenser. It has a slight noise to it as well, but Lincoln wasn't too concerned about that. So far, so good with this toy, as long as you're prepared for the training that's gonna go in on the front end. Now, it actually took Allison a few days to work up to the final part where the dispenser was automatically dropping the treats, but that's when it started to fail. Unfortunately, the dispenser is very inconsistent. Sometimes it would spit out one treat, other times it would spit out four treats, and other times it would spit out none. Now, when the babalot is rolling around a lot, it's also rather inconsistent, but that's because you need the dog to work this out using their brain and figuring out how to roll it around just so in order for the treats to fall out. With ringing a bell, there's really only one way to do it. And when the dispenser is not distributing treats every time the dog does his part, well, that's a fail in my book. You see, dog training requires consistency. Now, if the dog doesn't believe he's gonna get the reward for his work, he's gonna lose some motivation to do it. 
as well as some trust. So it kind of defeats the purpose of the toy. And Allison and Lincoln worked with it for a while, but the inconsistent treat dispensing continued. Eventually, Allison moved it further away from the fridge and Lincoln had no problem going to get it again, but the fact remains that the inconsistency is a problem. Now, Allison said they had a good time figuring out how to make it work and how to teach Lincoln to ring the bell. But in the end, it's not going to be a toy that gets a lot of use. But Lincoln is now pretty good at the bell, so maybe they'll find another use for it. All right, well, in summary, we like the bob a lot for some pups. We definitely like the Kong Wobbler and the Snoop. The West Paw Topple has several uses, so that's a good one. But go ahead and pass on that automatic treat dispenser. There are other, better ways to get your dog some exercise. Now, I hope you liked the first episode of this series. I think all the dogs on our team were pretty happy they got to try out these fun products. And what could be better than spending part of your workday playing with your dog? My team says it was a great time. In the comments below, tell me if you used any of these products and what other products you'd like us to review. 